our Father in heaven. Yeah. And we thank you for this amazing evening, this appointed time, where you have got appointment with each and every one of us. So we just come and we open up our hearts, we open up our spirits, and we surrender, and we yield into you. And we give you freedom. We ask that you take our hearts, our eyes, our ears, our thoughts, our mind into captivity. And you lock it unto you and onto you. That you come, Holy Spirit, with your breath and, and blow away each and every little piece of religion in us. Yes. All our own perceived ideas. Let us come to receive your word. We ask that you will come and you will change us. You will renew us. You will transfigure us and transform us. That we become a new creation. That we can reveal the truth of Jesus Christ and truly glorify him. We welcome the men in white linen, the angels, the clouds of witnesses in this place. We welcome the saints here. We welcome the seven spirits of God. Kizarek, David, Paul, Abigail. All of them we welcome in this place, Lord. But Lord, tonight we come and we just say, we only worship you, praise and glorify you. Amen. You are everything. Amen. And we pray it in the name above all names, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you. Well, some of you have been at the conference. We had a good conference. Yes. Yes. I enjoyed it. And I know God there are amazing things in people's lives. And not everything, we tend to look, always look in the natural. But your first position of looking is always in the spirit. Mm -hmm. I always teach to people, when you look at somebody, when you meet somebody, don't look at what you see in front of you. You always first look at the spirit. Because that is where the truth is. That's right. You can't be deceived there. Mm -hmm. And your spirit man can't lie. Why? Because he's created to the image and the character of Jesus Christ. Your soul can lie. Your body can lie. But your spirit can never lie. So that is why you look at each and every person in the spirit. And God reveals everything when a people, when people enter the door, you see their whole life. You see all about them because you look in the spirit. Nothing is hidden to the sons of God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that scary? Easy. <laughs> Easy. God knows your thoughts. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, are you in Christ? Yes. Doesn't he say that he gave you everything? So what happens when people sit in front of you, when you minister to people, you see their thoughts? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. So it's amazing when you have some places and meetings and venues and appointments and people will tell you so many stories and you look at them and it's probably you actually think, oh, you are such a liar. <laughs> and it's amazing when God takes you at evenings and things on adventures and he'll tell you, say for example, Alan is at this meeting and he's saying this and this and this and about you. And tomorrow night, you'll, or tomorrow morning, you meet Alan at a place and he says, Hey, it's been so good to see you. He said, No, 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 no. You lie because you said this, this, this. <laughs> <laughs> but how? It's impossible. Yeah, it is. But, but last night you wore this, this, this. And you can't doubt it anymore. That's right. Amen. And that is the level where we need to yep. move it yep. now. And it's yep. not just for summer. And believe me, it strengthens you. Why? Because when people lie you, you actually feel sorry for them. And you can administrate truth and heaven from them. And God yeah. reveals these things through the night to you. I'll tell my wife in the morning, Oh, this guy said this, this woman said this about you, this one slandered, this one spread the lunch. How can you say that? 
So don't worry, you'll see. God showed me everything. And the next time you see them, and you'll tell them, but you said this and this, and they start repenting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They start repenting. Yes. People, we need to be in a time and season where you should be in awe and amazement of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. That you should be blown away, and that you should start realizing what is in you, whom you are. Everything of Jesus Christ is in you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Every ability yes. is in you. Yes. Nothing, nothing, nothing is impossible. That's right. Amen. It's all about your heart. It's all about love. It's all of who you're pursuing. It's who is your king. Yes. Who's your king? I love it in... Um, um, see. Galatians 1 verse 11 and Says Paul says, Fine. For I want you to know, brethren, that the gospel which was proclaimed and made known um, by me is not man's gospel, human's invention, according to or patent after any human standard. For indeed I did not receive it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came to me through and direct revelation given to me. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you tonight. You know my time, my way of speaking and talking and ministering and teaching. I ask questions uh -huh. because I want you to investigate your heart. Amen. The truth can come back into it. I'm asking you tonight. Who's your rabbi? Yep. <laughs> yep. Who's your rabbi? Who's your teacher? Yeah. What you know of Jesus Christ? Who taught you? Hmm. I can tell you when I got off my deathbed about three years ago, the Lord said, tell the people if 80% or more that I know about Jesus Christ did not come directly from me or out of my word, mm -hmm. I don't know them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And if I look at the tendency around the world as I travel, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, most people know things about God through teachings and books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 We have substituted yeah. God with teaching and books. Yeah. So there's no depth, there's no intimacy, there's no character. You've got a head knowledge God, and you've not got a reality God that's a God of love, that's a God of relationship, that's a God of intimacy, that the same way that you and I have a, a conversation, has a relationship, the same way you're supposed to have with Jesus Christ, and it means it's a face-to-face -face relationship. Nobody... Nobody can ever come to me and say, I can't have a face-to-face -face. Nobody has got an excuse to ever say, I can't see Jesus. I can't hear his voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you might just as well take your Bible and throw it in the dustbin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's all to do with our hearts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All to do with our hearts. If you just go, I think it's Luke, Luke 8. When Jesus added Shati, out to all who would hear, listen with your heart and you will understand. 
That is where it was the parables of the seed that was sown. Jesus shouts to the disciples and to the people, listen with your heart and you will understand. Yeah. Now, when you came here tonight, hmm. where will your heart position? Mm -hmm. What was in your heart? Was it your daily workings, the daily thing that stole from you and everything? Or was it to come to honor, to glorify, to praise, to worship Jesus Christ? Because only then you get a receiving heart. Yes. Amen. That is a way of opening up, revealing your heart to Christ. That He comes and He floods you with His heart. That He knits your heart into one with Him. Listen with your heart. He says there, he said, you have been given a teachable heart to perceive the secret hidden mysteries of God's kingdom realm. But to those who don't have a listening heart, my heart, my words are merely stories. This is an out of the passion translation. And this is verse 10 of Luke 8. He said, you have been given a teachable heart to perceive, perceive the secret hidden mysteries of God's kingdom realm. But to those who don't have a listening heart, my words are merely stories. So I'm going to ask you, your lifestyle that you have right now, is it a lifestyle that are full daily by revelation, by <coughs> mysteries, by secrets, by keys of heaven. So could you daily feel in your life that you are lifted higher, that you are lifted higher. There's something new in you every day. And every morning when you wake up, there's something new. There's a new excitement. There's a new energy in you. There's a new desire for Jesus Christ. Because that is what happens when you are intimate with God. He pours His revelation. He pours His mysteries, His secrets. He reveals Himself to you and dimensions that you can't help it. But to be excited, like David says in the Psalms, when I go to bed at night, I meditate on God's goodness, on all His revelation, what He's done for me, what He's revealed to me. And when I wake up in the morning, I am still meditating on it. Why? Because your spirit man never sleeps. That's right. yeah. Your soul never sleeps. Yeah. Yeah. It depends where is your soul seated. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you go to bed at night, Lord, let my body rest, but be my rabuni, my teacher yeah. of my spirit and my soul. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because your spirit man hosts your soul and your body. So your spirit man reveals Jesus Christ. He's created to the image and the character of Jesus. He's created in the fullness of glory and majesty. So he reveals it to your soul. Your soul gets so excited in awe and amazement of the spirit man that he joins, he becomes one with him, and he submits to the great I am. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What happens now? Your spirit man becomes teachable. When your spirit man is teachable, your, your soul becomes teachable. When your soul's teachable, your heart is opened up yeah. to the master. That is one of the keys to get a listening heart. You need to get your soul to submit. Right. Yeah. Your soul will only submit when your spirit man is in relationship and in intimacy with Jesus Christ. Yeah. That is why your, your, your struggles in life is definitely not the devil. Yeah. Please. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Definitely not Hillary Clinton, <laughs> whoever the politician is. <laughs> not the politicians. No. It's not your circumstance. Your, your, your biggest mountain to climb in your life, to yeah. overcome, yeah. is your soul. Yes. Mm -hmm. and the only way your soul's going to over be overcome, going to submit, is when you receive yeah. the reflection of Jesus. Yeah. When you start seeing yourself seated, in Christ all the time. It says that the talks and it carries on about uh, being a lamp on a lamp stand. Here yeah, then is a deeper meaning that the word of God is the seed that's sown into your hearts. How much time do you spend in the word? 
Because the word is your foundation. The word is your open heaven. The word is your portal. Mm -hmm. How much time do you spend in it? <coughs> we talk about the lamp on a lampstand and everything that not, mustn't be hidden, that should be on a mountain top and everything. And then it says, because. No, the lamp displays on a lampstand to, other, to others are able to benefit from its brightness. Because this revelation lamp now shines, shines within you, nothing will be hidden from you. It will all be revealed. Yes. Yeah. Who's the revelation lamp? Who's the light? Jesus Christ. Where is he? He's inside of you. And he says, if he's inside of you, nothing, nothing, nothing will be hidden. It all, when he says all, it means all, Amen. will be revealed. Mm -hmm. Now, some of you are going to ask me, but why don't I get the revelation? Why don't I get the, his, the hidden secrets, the mysteries, the keys of them? My first time is going to be, what is your state? Of intimacy and relationship. That's right. Because God can't lie. Yeah. yeah. It's about your maturity. It's about your character. It's about can God trust you? Yes. Yeah. When He starts revealing the hidden secrets, mysteries, and things, mm -hmm. can He trust you with it? How are you going to use it? Are you going to use it for your own account, for your own ministry, to glorify yourself, to glorify? Mm -hmm. Your, your ministry in your own kingdom, are you going to use it yeah. to bring in the lost, yes. to bring in a desire in people to get mm -hmm. closer to God, to bring them back to a place <coughs> of being an awe and amazement of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what I see all over the world. As people got into this place now where it's all about all the um, encounters, <laughs> and people are using their revelation, the mysteries and the secrets of heaven, the keys of heaven for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And they even attach the name of Jesus Christ to it. Okay. How arrogant can you be? And we use the name of Jesus Christ to manipulate and yeah. to control. Yes. Yes. Buying our own kingdoms yeah. and trying to be so holy. I've seen it all over the world. Even great leaders out there are coming. Did you see that? And I'm coming there saying, did you see this? Meantime, it's not even there in the spirit. They're just saying things to try and impress. If somebody has got encounters with God, and somebody walk in intimacy with if I look at somebody with relation, I can see fire around them. If there's no fire, there's no intimacy. Sorry. <laughs> Because when you are intimate with God, it means that you're on a sea of glass and crystal. Your spirit man is there. You're on the stones, the burning stones of fire. You become a living stone, a building block of the new Jerusalem, the word says. Yeah. One beer or two. Yeah. You're a building block. You're on fire. So when you separate yourself from Jesus Christ, there's no fire upon you. When you release things, even in the name of Jesus Christ, and He has not told you there's no fire coming out of your yes, mouth. Yes, Amen. yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. 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 Because the revelation land now sounds, and nothing is hidden, for it will all be revealed. Every secret of the kingdom will be unveiled and out in the open, made known by this revelation light. So pay careful attention to your hearts as you hear my teaching, for to those who have open hearts, even more revelation will be given to them until it overflows. And for those who do not listen with open hearts, what little light they imagine to have will be taken away. Yeah. Wow. God says he'll come and give you revelation. Mm -hmm. 
He'll give you secrets, hidden mysteries, till it overflows in you. It means that it becomes uncontrollable. It's like a tsunami coming over you. You have got no control over the Holy Spirit. And um, I'm going to share a few things tonight. And by this, I want to make it clear. When I share things of you, it's not to tell you, yes, I'm so holy and I'm so good. I'm a person just as you. I learn every day. But there are days in my life that I beg the Lord, Lord, I ask you, for the next 12 hours, 20, don't tell me anything, please. <laughs> because you blow me away. That the fear of God comes over you. That you feel you want to run away. And sometimes he'll tell me, I said, well, I'm just going to run away. Just said, you can't run because whichever way you turn, I'm there. <laughs> That's true. That is what happens when you influence. So you can't help it. When you get the revelation secrets of life from Jesus Christ, you realize that I need to stay attached to Him. I can't separate because you need to get the understanding of it. Everybody goes just for knowledge and things of the wisdom, but if you have not got the understanding, how can you participate with heaven? And you are steward, you are administrator, you are legislator from heaven, so we need the understanding to know how did Jesus make these things? How does he operate? How do I need to steward and administrate it here on earth? Because I need to restore heaven on earth. Amen. And now I went to the scriptures that I didn't even plan tonight. Because <laughs> he never spoke to me about Luke 8 this earlier. <laughs> God's way, obviously, it's for some year. Yeah. Yeah. We're in amazing season. It's a year of blessing, it's a year of revelation, it's a year of where God comes to restore. Last, last year, 2017, was probably the most difficult year for most people in life. Mm -hmm. Most people in ministry. Mm -hmm. You go all over the world and say, it was fire, storms. Yeah. Yeah. We were in the desert. Yes, because it was the year of Jubilee. Mm -hmm. right. Year of Jubilee, would make, don't make a mistake and think, year of Jubilee, I must receive. You're not receiving in the year of Jubilee. The year of Jubilee is repositioning you so that you can receive from year 1 until year 49. So what happens in the year of Jubilee? He puts you in the fire. He puts you in the storm. He puts you in the desert. So he unveils everything in your open heart that stands between him and you so that you could get rid of it so that his blessing, his hiddenness, his secrets, his mysteries can come and overflow you. Mm, Why? So we're in the year of the blessing. We're in the year of the door. Yeah. Yeah. Door of Jesus Christ, you're seated in Christ. So what you are touching, you're becoming. So you become a door. A everlasting door. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Everlasting door actually means that you've got everlasting access to the fullness and the provision of heaven. That's why God says He has given you everything. Amen. You lack nothing. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So what happens? Who's lost their joy? Because you can't lose your joy. <laughs> you lack nothing. Amen. So you can't beg anymore in your prayers. You lack nothing. There you go. Yeah, because we've become a bunch of beggars. Yeah. Instead of kings and rulers that own yeah. everything. You own over three trillion galaxies. That's right. Do you lack something? <laughs> I don't think so. Huh? No. How amazing. Yeah. Have you gone to the storehouses? Have you seen it? Have you seen it? No. Believe me, I was taken about, I was in Australia <laughs> oh, a few weeks ago. And one day, one evening, the Lord said, I want to show you a few things again. And I've been on many encounters and things. And to do with story, I said, it took me into the dimensions. That he saw, showed me some storehouses that I asked him, Lord, just let me go. Hmm. And I realized what a responsibility is going to be <coughs> to steward. We've got no idea what it means when God says, I've got a storehouse for you. Mm. 
I'm talking about storehouses mm -hmm. thousands of times bigger than Earth, one storehouse. Whoa. That you can't describe, that you literally, believe me if I said, you fear. You've got fear in you. You want to run away. You want to beg and leave me alone. Don't even show it to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. You better do it. We're in the season of blessing in Deuteronomy 28 where the Lord says, if you obey my commands, my blessings will come and my blessings will come and overtake you. It means that you've got no control. <laughs> You know what you can, everything, let's go a little bit supernatural. Let's do some basic supernatural things. Everything that you've lost in the past, you can redeem and restore. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's true. Yeah. And you can restore sevenfold and more, hundredfold. Yeah. Yeah. What happens? Let me put it to you, give you a bit of a, 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 I'm going to put it to make it easy for you. Okay. You, the connector, the, the carpet here is earth, the ceiling is heaven. You're on a, let's call it a timeline. Now you walk in your life, you come to a point where you <coughs> sin. You get put in the desert. So everything from this step now to the following few steps, Till you repent and everything, you have lost the blessing between this point and this point. You've lost it. The devil had the right to steal everything under heaven to earth yep. that's been released in this time yeah. span. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. So it's stolen. You lost it. Yeah. Yeah. What happens when you in sin? I defiled the earth. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Why? I changed the sound, the frequency, and the vibration of the earth to receive the blessing of Christ. I defiled it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I defiled, tried, tried to defile heaven. Yeah. I could not receive. What? The devil had the legal right to steal it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now I step here, yeah, I step out of my sin, I repent. Yeah. I repent firstly of the sin, and then I repent, Lord. You told me that the whole earth will be full of my glory. I was supposed to fill the earth with glory. I defiled it. Yeah. The sound, the frequency, and vibration of earth, I asked and I commanded to be restored in that time span. Yeah. Lord, I command yeah. the blessings of that time span of sin to be brought into the now. Yes. Wow. That's right. Out of the hands of Satan, back into your possession. What do I do? I carry on with my life and I administrate what I've lost there to the glory of God now. Wow. It's much deeper. That's just to give you a basic idea. So you can go back and restore everything of your past, but start with the land. Yeah. That's why intercessions make a big mistake and even at uh, yeah. events and everything that we go to, churches, everything, mm -hmm. we the intercessors pray and they clean the atmosphere and the angels go and they go crazy, yeah. but they've done nothing with the land. Mm. Yeah. Where does the darkness come out of the depths of the earth? Under the earth. Come from the waters. Under the waters. Uh -huh. that was good. That's why 80% of the earth is followed by water. Who controls the waters? Yeah. Leviathan. Yeah. So where do you start? <coughs> you want to clean the place? When you want to prepare the atmosphere in churches, conferences, you start on the floor. Yeah. Sound frequency vibration because the glory must come to the earth. So you restore the earth. Amen. Then you go into the heavenlies. Yeah. Yeah. No way is that you just cling at the top and the devil bites you in the shimmer from the back. Yeah. But the real fact, let me go a bit deeper into, not deeper, I'm just going to share something. Are you in Christ? Yes. So he says that he's got feet of grass. So if you're in him, you've got feet of grass, so how can the snake bite you? Okay. He can't. But we don't walk like that. Do you see yourself like that? Okay. I'm totally off this. <laughs> that was good. Man. 
Great. Thirsting for God. This is a key. You and I need to step and start living and becoming Psalm 63. Thirsting for God. Now be honest with yourself tonight. When you had to come here, how many of you, don't put, no, don't put up your hands. Be honest with yourself. How many of you tried to make excuses not to come? Oh. Maybe 80% of them. When you go to church on Sundays, how many make excuses? That's what we do every day with Jesus. We make excuses not to read the Bible, not to spend time, to keep us busy with other things. Of our own idols, our televisions, or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we expect Him to bless, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to pour out His blessings and oh, His yeah. Word and His covenant and everything upon us. All mm -hmm. to do with thirst, that's all to do with love. I'm going to do it out of the Passion Translation. Of God of my life. Mm -hmm. Who's the God of your life? Yeah. And don't answer Yeshua. Not yet. <laughs> Maybe it's your children. Mm -hmm. Upon who do you base your decisions? Mm -hmm. Your plans that you make every day. On whom are they based? Are they based on Jesus? On your husband, your wife, your children, your bank account, your job, whatever. Mm -hmm. Your sports. Do we plan around Jesus? Or do you plan around your children? Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Yep. I'm lovesick for you in this weary wilderness. Mm -hmm. Are you lovesick of Jesus? Yeah. The only way you're going to get lovesick for Jesus is if you have an intimate relationship with Him. Why? Because you see the revelation of Jesus all the time when you are sitting here right now and I'm standing here now. Where's Jesus? Do you see His face? Mm -hmm. Because once you stand and you see His face all the time, you get lovesick because what does He do? He reveals revelation upon revelation, dimension upon dimensions upon you. What happens to your spirit man as somebody that stands in front teaching, He takes your spirit man in dimension to dimension, dimension, and you get transformed and transfigured all the time in the spirit. So what happens to your spirit? Your spirit man gets expanded, your spirit man's ten spins are moving, and you become the child that you've been created to be that the earth is your footstool. Yes. Yeah. Love sickness comes out of relationship, it comes with intimacy. Yeah. And it's a constant thing. To be love sick it means you grow in love all the time, every day. And this let me teach you something tonight. Let me give you a nugget. One of the best times to exercise your spiritual maturity and to grow is when you on your in the place where you are so tired you can hardly keep open your eyes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> when you've had a tough day, you worked hard, or you had a lot of ministry, and you are because you know sometimes we go and do ministry, and I think Dennis and Kathy then probably have done that as well. That you stand and you minister for six, seven, eight hours, laying hands, thousands of people yeah. just coming, 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 and you just stand and you pray. You are finished afterwards. Yeah. But then the key is, where do I go? I go into Him. Yeah. My seat of praise, I start praising Him, worshiping Him, let Him energize me. He's my energy. He's my life. Not, I need to take a break and go and sleep. Yeah. <laughs> then, this teaches you how to become spiritually fit. Amen. Spiritually fit means that you're engaged and one with Him, aware of Him, active in Him all the time. Then you become a host and not a place of visitation. Yeah. Come on. 
And that's an exercise. It's a journey that you go on. When you come to me, you go, Lord, I just want to tell. What do most people do? I've seen ministries as I travel the world. You stay with people in ministry that minister. They go, oh, I just need to take a break. They put on the television and they do everything else because this is the break. No, you want to break in them. That's right. You want to break in the person that you are love sick with. When you fell in love with your girlfriend or your boyfriend the first time, it doesn't matter how tired you are. You used to go and visit that person and spend your eyes, you sat with your eyes on the head knocking, as long as you could be with that person and engage that person. And uh, do you do the same with Jesus? Yeah. 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 I sat night through. And the next time I had to go and work and at work I walk like this, but as long as I could be with Hetty and just look at her. <laughs> you feel the same about yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Amen. That's how you become lovesick. And now you get dimensions. Now he takes your spirit man in dimensions. Right. You know when you stand in front of your I've already changed three times. Mm-hmm. I've already gone into three different realms and dimensions out of the different scriptures. Mm-hmm. It's a new realm, it's a new dimension. So your spirit man changes into the image of God in that dimension. Mm-hmm. And that's how you look at people to see where are they. <laughs> I thirst for the deepest longings to love you more. Yes. Amen. Now, let's say we had the conference the weekend. God stirred something in your heart. He gave you a longing. The longing that you had yesterday should have increased by many dimensions. Mm -hmm. That's why people go to conferences and they're on a high for a week and then they fall back to even lower when they were they were. (laughs) Because they expect a... A Tinkerbell Jesus. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Flying come on. in with a magic wand and just fixes everything and there I go. Uh-huh. No, not really. You need to take what you receive and you need to get your own revelation yeah. upon it according yes. to your identity. Yes. According to you. What, what does a speaker do? That's what the speaker is. The speaker gives you guidelines because that's the way that God worked with that person, his identity. So he might come and add something new to you or change it slightly, but at the end, the end product's going to be the same. Yeah. It's Amen. going to be about Jesus. Amen. So you need to work with it, what you proceed. You need to spend time. You need to build, and it's not going to take a day because nobody releases deeper revelation and it just happened. They needed to pay a price. They needed to sacrifice, sitting right through the nights, not sleeping with Jesus, with Jesus, with Jesus. With cravings of my heart that I can't describe. That's where you walk and you know when you're excited, it's like there's bubbles in your chest and your heart. There's excitement, there's electricity in you. What does it mean? That the Holy Spirit is busy stirring your spirit. He's busy working with the four angels of the four corners of the earth. Because how big is your spirit, man? Yeah. It's an image of God, huge, dimensions big, because the earth is your footstool. So the angels of the four corners of the earth come and they breathe through you. Mm-hmm. Stir your spirit man, your heart, to be repositioned. It stirs your sound and vibration and frequency <laughs> so that you crave for Jesus Christ. It releases the sound, the frequency of heaven. That's why intimacy is so important. Intimacy keeps that craving into you, yeah. that sound in you of heaven. Amen. Such yearnings grips my soul for you, my God. Mm. What does your soul say to you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why you need your soul to come into the place of intimacy with Jesus Christ. That's why your spirit man needs to be awakened, standing up, taking up its position, as ruler. Now, I know there are teachings out there where people said you must divide your spirit and your soul. Mm-hmm. And I even know some people say and they take, man, I don't know what access, and they go every day and they cut the two. You will die. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm not a doctor, but I'm sure any doctor will tell you. 
when your spirit and your soul is separated, you die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What happens? It's not a separation. It is a reorder. You are putting it according to order. Mm -hmm. You to reposition it. Spirit, mm -hmm. soul, yeah. body. Mm -hmm. It's getting your soul to submit to your spirit. It's not separating it. Amen. So what do you need to do? You need your spirit man to submit to the Holy Spirit and then he commands your soul to submit to him. Amen. I'm energized every time I enter your heavenly sanctuary to seek more of your power and drink and more of your glory. How do I get energized? You in your seat. In your position, in heaven, in Christ. I am energized every time that I enter your sanctuary. What are you? You and I are supposed to be the sanctuary. In, in Ephesians 2, in the, in the, in the uh, Passion Trans, he said that I, you are under construction and is busy creating and forming you to become the Holy of Holies. Yeah. That's right. Right. You become a sanctuary. You and I are supposed to be a sanctuary now, a place of habitation. Yeah. So why aren't we energized? <laughs> we get energized by Red Bull. Starbucks coffee. Yeah, Starbucks coffee. <laughs> you see, this is the key of intimacy. Why? I'm energized. So I'm a ready worker for God. I'm a ready ruler. Whatever he needs, I can move, I can do. But the key is intimacy in his sanctuary. You'll only stay in that sanctuary if you're in love with him. Love sick, as the word says. To seek more of your power. Now, all of us have been given the fullness of God. You've got the fullness of His power. Yes. Why do you ask Him and pray for power? Thank you. <laughs> I go to meetings and we pray in conferences and crusades of the world. You get the leaders and the pastors. Lord, tonight I ask that you give me all the power that you've got. <laughs> Can I tell you what? It's about the person, it's not about God because he wants to display himself. Because he's given you everything. The thing is, do you believe God? That's right. That's a good do you believe him? That's a great question. <coughs> And drink the more of your glory. What is his glory? Yeah. It's his love. Amen. There's nothing more than love. God's glory is his love. Yes. And you and I have been surrounded by glory all the time. Amen. Why? What I said, the atmosphere is blue. The heavens is blue. If you take blue and you spin it higher than the speed of light and sound, it becomes gold. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Let me stay you a little bit. I'll take that. Adam and Eve were spirit. Uh-huh. Yeah. They sinned. Uh-huh. They became flesh. Uh-huh. Blood. Yeah. What is blood? <laughs> Decompressed light. Mm -hmm. mm. I like that. Hey, that's fine. I like that. I look at that's good. Research, scientific research. I would believe that. <coughs> People praise light. Say that again. Say that again. Blood is decompressed light. Mm. When Adam and Eve said they became Spirit, the flesh, water. Yeah. 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 Decompress yeah. life because the fullness of the glory got removed. Yeah. The fullness yeah. of life. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I 
drink the more of your glory. So what do we need to drink? We need to drink his love. And how do I drink it? I'm seated in it, in my seat of peace and rest. I'm consumed by love. The perfection of love is in your body. That's why each and every cell in your body has got a cross in it. So what does God say? Take your cells and your body to the cross because the cross is the thing that reveals the perfection of love. Jesus dying for you. That's good. What happens when every cell in your body is submitted to the cross and step into the fullness of glory of love, you get a transfigured body that Amen. releases the sound, the frequency, vibration of heaven, and where I move, I influence atmospheres and I restore the glory of all over the earth. For your tender mercies mean more to me and life itself. How I love and praise you, God. God's mercy is more important than your life. The way that you show mercy to others is the way that you receive mercy from God. Mm -hmm. That's true. That you acknowledge yeah. the mercy the gift of mercy in your life. Amen. So you've got to ask yourself, how much grace, how much mercy do I show to other people? Because in this year, our mercy and our grace is going to be tested. Hmm. Good. Daily, I will worship you passionately and with all my art. My arms will wave to you like banners of praise. I worship you passionately daily. It should actually say constantly. I worship, I praise you with all my heart, with my whole being. Amen. It's not an event. Like tonight was not an event of worship. No. Because you were supposed to come and hear in praise and worship. Mm -hmm. Wherever you walk, it's praise and worship. Wherever you walk, your cells must praise and worship God. Your whole being, body, soul, and soul, praise you. That's why every morning when you wake up, you command your body, soul, and soul. You will yeah. praise, you yes. will worship, praise. you'll have thanksgiving. Your whole being, every day, the whole time, releasing the sound, the frequency of heaven. Yeah. It means, comes into my gates with praise. And thanks in praise and worship. Why? Praise brings you in. The gates open. You come and you're in awe and amazement in God. You fall your face to the ground. And you fall and you worship him. Because worship is kissing his feet. And when you kiss his feet, it means that you're on the training floor of his feet. And the training floor of the hymn of his garment. And you're in touch with the high priest. You get sanctified and you become the Holy of Holies. Uh, what are you then as well? You touch a garment to him, you're in the fullness of the anointing of his oil, and you become a river of water, of a living stream of water, and the living stream of water, if you go in heavenly places, you'll see it. There's always filled with oil as well. Yeah. Oil of glory, oil of love, yeah. oil of worship, oil of passion, oil of peace. It says, and I, and I, my arms will wave to you like banners of praise. What's a banner? You actually, what are you doing? You're actually prophesying Jehovah Nisi. Oh, that's what you do when you worship him with your arms up like banners of praise. Why? Jehovah Nishi, it's a banner. It's not a banner that we think is like a canopy over you. A banner in the biblical times was when you went out to war, you got victory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The head of the war, the general, the king, went on the high top and he put in a banner, a flag. To declare the victory. So what do you do? When you praise God in own worship and a banner of praise, it actually means you declare and you praise Him for the everlasting victory that's been granted, that He has overcome death, that has overcome everything in your life, that He's given you eternity you can't lose. Oh. You can never lose. 
you can never lose in Jesus Christ. So what you have been doing in the spirit and realm, you are releasing the banner, Jehovah Nishi, upon your life, upon your family, Amen. upon your inheritance from Amen. one generation to the next. Yes. So what does your children do? They step in under the banner of Jehovah Nishi and just carry on into yes. victory, into victory, into victory, into victory, glorifying God. Amen. I overflow with praise when I come before you, for the anointing of your presence satisfies me like nothing else. You are such a rich banquet of pleasure to my soul. How do I overflow with him? Praise in his presence. Everything comes back to his presence. Everything comes back to his presence. I overflow with praise. Enter into my own presence with praise. So when you have a lifestyle of praise, glorifying God each and every morning, it means that you are in His presence all the time. Mm -hmm. Now you start getting the revelation of Him all the time and you don't want to leave. What happens in His presence? The sound frequency vibration gets released. Your DNA that are full of the scroll, your purpose, your calling, your destiny, gets enlightened and revealed to you. And it takes you back. Gives you a craving and desire to the one that you knew before you were in the mother's womb. Yeah. 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 Amen. It was such a rich banquet of pleasure to my soul. Aha, here comes the challenge. Where's his banquet of pleasure? Psalm 23. Yeah. In front of your enemies. Yeah. Yeah. And to whom is it? To your soul. It's going to test the maturity and the intimacy of your soul. Amen. I prepare a table, a banquet, in yeah. front of your enemies. How does it work? I went to Ellen and I said, Lord, say, I want to show you something. And he had a table. It was probably from there right through to the wall. And there were food and things on it and fruit and beets and everything and desserts, and he said, have a banquet, sit there again. And I sat there, and I started eating, feasting on it. And he stood on the other side of the table, and I said, are you loving it? Yes, and he fed me, and he put fruit in your mouth and everything. The fruit in heaven, big and colorful, and when it comes to your mouth, it becomes like a judge, of, it just goes in you. <laughs> amazing, and the taste and the fragrance, and it's amazing. And I sat there and suddenly Jesus said, quickly have a look behind you. And I looked and I, go, and I went like this. He said, yes. And behind me I saw millions of demons and monsters and things. <laughs> and fear wanted to come over me. Mm. And he said, yes. It's your soul that you look through now. Yeah. Yeah. When I prepare a table in front of your enemies, it means that you feast on me. You look ahead at me. I look at the enemies. And there's what it says in Revelation 1 that the fire comes out of my eyes. I release the fire upon the enemies. They get scorched, they get burned, and fear overcomes them, and you feast. So, how do you do? In your darkest circumstances, you feast. You keep your eyes on, you don't look at the enemies. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. There you go. You see, that is so important. You are such a rich banquet pleasure to my soul. So that's why it's so important intimacy that your soul submits yeah. to your spirit. I lie awake each night thinking of you and reflecting how you help me. Like <coughs> How much have you reflected today on God? Yeah. A 
she bring all the time. Yeah. And that's what that's what makes life so interesting, so wonderful. The night times that you can sit up the whole night just reflecting on what is done for you. I know we sing all these amazing songs and we walk and the preachers stand in front of the church and say, God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. All the time. And we all shout it out. And we all lie. <laughs> or most people lie. Why? Because they've got no testimony, no reason to say that God was good for them during the day. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Some are in the storm and the desert and they and trouble and everything, and they come tonight because they want to be holy in front of the people. Yeah, all the time God is good. <laughs> and they've just opened up the realm for the devil to come and persecute them and give them some more of the bad things. Yeah. Because they lied. <laughs> Because whatever you release about God must be in spirit and truth. Yes. Intimacy br brings into the place that you can truly say, that God is good. I'm such a severe attack by the devil. And I was fighting for my life. But he was so good in it. You should have seen what it's done. Yes. How much do you think of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Am I awake? Mm -hmm. Thinking of him all the time. Yes. Even when you sleep, mm -hmm. you can, and should I put it this way, you must be aware of it. That's why I meet a lot of people say, it's a bit rough and we don't even have time to read Bible or to pray or to think about Jesus, but now I'm off work, now I can go and think about it. Mm. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you, know, you can't tell me you love him then. Because mm -hmm. when you fell in love with your boyfriend, your girlfriend, husband, wife, whatever, you can't stop thinking about it. Even at night, when you're so tired, you're just lying in the bed, dreaming about <laughs> Yeah, come on. Yeah. Intimacy with God means that you're going to have you're going to have a reason to lie awake. That's right. It gives you a desire to lie awake because you're going to be in awe and amazement. What is done, what is revealed, his hiddenness, his secrets, his mysteries, his keys of heaven. I sing through the night under your splendor shadow, offering up to you my songs of their light and joy. He delights in you. Yeah, he, he sings over you. How much you sing unto him. Mm -hmm. yeah. When your soul and your spirit and your body is in the presence of the glory of God, they praise and worship and sing him. Why? They release sound frequency, vibration all the time. Mm -hmm. All the time. So what do we need? We need to become a delight to God again. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. That's why we need one of the seven spirits, wisdom. Yes. I think it's in Proverbs 8, verse 31, right about there. That he says, and wisdom was there before the foundations of the earth. And she was a delight. So what does wisdom do? Wisdom comes and teaches us, bring us to a place of maturity, taking us back into the revelation of Jesus Christ, into our identities, so that we become a delight to God. When we start praising and worshiping God in spirit and truth, it delights Him. 
Amen. He delights him. Hmm. With passion I pursue and cling to you. Oh, oh. With passion. Passion means with exultant joy, with explosive power, with a craving, with a desire. Passion in God and the Hebrew and the Greek actually means that you will pursue Him, your fight with your life, not to be separated from Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's a daily walk, it's a daily time, like right now. Are you yeah. sitting here with passion? with a desire not to be separated. That you want to destroy everything that wants to separate you from. Amen. Because I feel your grip on my life. I keep my soul close to your heart. Feel the grip of your life. It means that you've surrendered in the fullness of His control. You step into Romans 12, 1, becoming a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Lord. My soul to your heart. Because what is the key there? Your soul needs to become one with the heartbeat and the sound of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You never separate your soul. That's the only way you're going to keep your soul from submitting to Jesus Christ. Those who plot to destroy shall descend into the darkness of hell and they will be consumed by their own evil and become nothing more than dust under our feet. These liars will be silenced forever, but with the anointing of a king I will dance and rejoice along with all his lovers who trust in him. So I'm not going to focus on enemies, but it comes here with the anointing of a king. King. When have you been anointed? You've already been anointed before you were in the mother's womb. Because you've then been created as a king and you've been given that instruction to go and rule. Yep. Not when you manifested on earth in the flesh. You've already been anointed or dated. You already had relationship. I knew you, which means I had relationship with you before you were in the mother's womb. And that's why he rejoices, because he, your spirit, rejoices all the time, because it knew God then. Things got revealed then. Mm -hmm. Along with all of his lovers who trust in him. A lover is somebody that trust. Amen. Do you trust God? It means that you walk in radical obedience, in radical faith, in radical passion for Jesus. And the key in the scripture that you can highlight in your life for this time and season is Psalm 25, 14, mm -hmm. which I think is so relevant and so important. If you want to step into Psalm 63, it says in a passion, there is a, pli a private place reserved for the lovers of God, where they sit near him and receive the revelation secrets of his promises. I'm going to ask you tonight, have you stepped into that private place that God has preserved for you? Because each and every one has got a position in heaven, a position in Christ just for you. I can't go and sit in your position. Yeah. Amen. And that is your seat of rest, your throne of peace and rest in Christ, where his revelation secrets get released. Where Paul says, I receive the mysteries of heaven through revelation, Ephesians 3 verse 4. Amen. You need to step into the revelation secrets of heaven to become a ruler. You need revelation secrets to become a priest and a king according to the order of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. We need those things to be able to become a son of God. Mm -hmm. Have you found your place? It's a place of peace. 
That's a place where you meditate all the time of God's goodness, where the one dimension to the other gets revealed to you, gets revealed to you, gets revealed to you, and it's all the time never ending. Special place reserved for the sons of God. Secret place. Have you found it? Amen. Mm -hmm. Any questions of what we've done tonight? Mm -hmm. I spoke about. <coughs> Can you give an altar call? Okay. <laughs> 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 What, what I'm going to pray for you now. Tomorrow night we'll do some activation. <coughs> but tomorrow night we're going to do something a little bit different. We're not really going to teach tomorrow night. Tomorrow night I'm going to give you opportunities to ask questions. What? To ask questions. All supernatural questions. Yeah, we're going to ask about heaven, about encounters, about realms. Mm -hmm. All those type of things. Why do I want to do it? I've done it a lot across the world, especially in the last year, and I've seen how dimensions and realms get open. Once you start talking about these things, things manifest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things have happened. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing there. Then you can share things which you don't share on the platforms out there. <laughs> yeah. It's difficult it's when you go spirit. out in churches, you can't just share everything because everybody is in a different place. Yeah. And if you, re if you release the right thing at the wrong time, you can destroy yeah. that person. Yeah. 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 And we need to protect and guard people. Amen. Yes. Amen. That is, that is, we need to have the heart of the Father to yeah. protect and to guard people. Yeah. That's good. So I'm going to give you opportunity tomorrow night and, and Grandma Ye will sit with me and she'll also answer questions. <laughs> Um, any questions about tonight? Mm -hmm. You must ask, don't come afterwards. The gates are closing. All that you said it almost feels like it's impossible. Yeah, you see that say? Mm -hmm. Mind shift. Yes. Why you do you know the big thing there, and I totally agree with you. Because we look in the natural. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is what we need to get our spirits in control. We need to sit and start meditating on the word and take scripture by scripture and really speak. What do most people do? Most people go out when they read Bible, they're actually trying to impress Jesus. <laughs> try to classify themselves because they quickly want to read the chapter and then they get a bit, oh, I've read my Bible today. They don't even know what they've read. <laughs> Instead of, you can spend on one verse a week, a month. I know, I know Grant Cook. I did three conferences with him in Australia. Yes. Yes. He spent, was it three years? Psalm 91. Yeah. He wasn't yeah. allowed to read anything else. He said, yeah. and he loves Timothy. You speak to Graham, he loves Timothy. <laughs> and he said, some days he used to sit, and he'll sit there with um, Psalm 91, and he'll just move it to Timothy. And he'll say, what do you think you're doing? Yeah. Just going back to yeah. 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 Psalm 91. Yeah. Remember, the, the Hebrews say there are 40 layers of revelation yeah. per scripture. I tell you something. If yeah. you had to ask me, yeah. I think there are thousands. So. Yeah. Yes. Because if you take, you look at the God that created over the scientists, say, over three trillion galaxies. Amen. Yeah. Each and every galaxy is a dimension of Jesus Christ. Amen. Right. So you and I have got over three trillion dimensions to get to know Jesus. Yes. So that's why you're eternal being. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So how much revelation must be yeah. Yeah. for everything? Yes. So that's what we need to, you need to step in the place, and I discussed it at the conference, Ephesians 2 and everything. You are seated in Christ, you in Him. You will need to start in your exercises and being strong, <laughs> meditating Christ, seeing yourself with your, what did we speak about earlier? Your heart. Yeah. Yes. Because the eyes of your heart, you hear with your heart, you see with your heart. Mm 
And the spending time scripture, Lord, give me the fullness of the revelation of this. I need to walk in this. What is it? What is the power? What are the revelation? Spend time. Don't rush through the word and say, hey, I've read through my word in one year. I've read the whole Bible or whatever. Is it alive? Is it alive? What happens now? I start reading my Bible. Now I start... Where can we go? Where they walk through the sea. Here's where I walk through the sea. Lord, what did it look like? What happened? I need the understanding of that. I need the revelation. Yeah. I need the knowledge. Amen. I need the wisdom because I need to operate like that as a king. What Moses happened with Moses, everything, I need to do it. Yeah. What happens? The words of life. Now I go sit on meditate. I get taken in the spirit back to the time. That's right. right. God reveals it to you. You actually become a witness of the event. Hey! Wow. Amen. <laughs> wow. You become a witness of the event. Yeah. What happens now? I've been there. I've seen it. Tomorrow I can go to church. I can preach it in power. That's what right. happens now? What looked impossible to me is not anymore impossible because I've been there. I've seen it happen. Yes. Yes. Unfortunately, the human mind and the doctor will know much better than I do about it. <laughs> the human mind works like that. We, yeah. we tend to walk what we see, we believe. Yeah. 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 Once we see a thing, yeah. we believe it. That's why the word is alive. You can never tell me the word is boring. That's right. No, you battle right. to it because you're only going to battle to read the, to read the Bible if you're not in country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. 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 yes How? I was there yesterday, but I can't remember how you, if you said how you got to see Jesus. How you came about getting to see Jesus? You say you can look up. Yeah. If I look, if you now. I want to be able to do that too. Yeah. Everybody can do it. I see his face now. I look there. I see his face, looking at me. Now let's let's start that quickly. Yeah. yeah. I might say, look at the face. Of, where do you see Jesus now? You first you're going to see out of the eyes you imagine. Shirley might look there. She might see his face there. Mm -hmm. See him in people's faces. Yeah, okay. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. We all might see him at a different place. Right. Who's wrong, who's right? <coughs> no one's wrong. No. He will reveal himself wherever he wants to do. He's a God that is only present, ever present. He's in trillions, billions of dimensions at a time. But the key is to see him all the time. What happens when you see his face all the time? You're not going to sin. Right. What you behold of your eyes, you become. Yes, sir. Amen. You get transformed. Yep. All the time. You step it into 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. We move from glory to glory all the time. Your spirit man gets transformed all the time. Your ten pens, your spirit man gets enlarged Amen. all the time. And that is exercise. Even when you at work, whatever you're doing, is trying to behold his eyes, to behold his face. That's why he says in Genesis 17, 1 to Abram, Abram, walk habitually before me and be blameless. It yes, means walk habitually before me is not that I walk and Jesus follows me. No. It, in the Hebrew and the Greek it says walk habitually, walk all the time towards me, before me, towards Amen. me. And gaze upon my face. Yes. Why? The whole time you gaze at the revelation of Jesus Christ. You are more and amazed. Your body, your soul, your spirit. I start praying. The banners that Jehovah needs you get plugged in all the time that you move. You praise, you worship, restoring glory. What happens? You see that in Christ, you're clothed by Christ in glory, and you actually become untouchable. A word that we don't want to use because of our religion. But the reality is, if we are truly walking in a dimension and, and unity and oneness with Christ, you're actually untouchable. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's why your most important um, armor is not Ephesians 6.12. It's yes. Ephesians 6.12 are characteristics of God that yeah. you need. Yeah. Amen. The armor that you need is, in, in Romans, the armor of light. Jesus. Yes. That means you are clothed by Jesus Christ. Amen. You're Amen. in Him. 
Right. So the devil can't touch because of Ephesians 6 armor, your back is open, everything's open. Everything. So you can get knocked. But the armor of life, it means you consume, you in him. That's right. Untouchable. Yeah. And by that I don't say go and challenge the devil. <laughs> yeah. Don't ever do that. No. Yeah. Don't get arrogant. There's a there's yeah. a difference between arrogance and confidence and rulership. That's right. Come on, yes. Don't yeah. get a nice spiritual dad Bob Jones when he died the first time in 1975. Yes. The Lord warned him and said, Bob, you are arrogant. You're challenging the devil. Stop it. He's going to steal your life. Mm -hmm. One day he got in a tree with his boy, 1975. A demon came and hit him. He said, just saw a demon coming, hit him, and he fell down out of the tree, internal bleeding, and he died. Mm -hmm. He got resurrected. Yes. Because he was arrogant. Mm -hmm. And then he had an encounter, mm. and now he got sent back to earth and been resurrected. After he's been certified dead. Mm -hmm. I, I got one. You just, wow. when, you, when you point, you see the scripture that you're, yeah. don't you? I knew yeah, it. I, I knew you did. You see it. Just like you see his face, he shows you that scripture yeah. when you're on. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 Sometimes you just see like the scroll mm -hmm. and the scroll. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's like photogenic people. <laughs> You've heard no. at times that, uh, that you have to command your soul to line up. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Remember your soul is what I call in worldly terms is after the bling. <laughs> yeah. It's after the glory and the world. Your, your soul has got worldly desires. Yeah. Amen. That's it. So you need to go, I command my soul every day. You will submit to the spirit man. Amen. And my spirit man, you will only obey the voice of the Holy Spirit and of God. So you command them, you order them. Amen. And you're going to get challenged. And that's why when your soul steps out of the order, that's when you sin. Because it's pride is arrogance. Pride and arrogance are the root. Pride is the root of all sin. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Doesn't matter what sin it comes pride. Because what is pride? When you make your decision higher than God's. Right. So yeah. sin is, I prefer to do it this way and not God's way. Amen. That's why Ezekiel 28, because you traded on the platforms of pride, you got thrown out of heaven. Amen. Devil, king of fire. Yeah. So you need to work with them. That's why intimacy and seeing his face can helps you Amen. not to battle as much with your soul. Amen. And that's why you need your spirit man active, because the whole time he reveals the glory, he reveals the glory. And when your soul sees glory, he loves it. Amen. You want something. <coughs> yeah. Amen. Edson, are you imagining seeing his face? And I'm having a hard time because okay. we've been talking. In the beginning, in the beginning, you're going to sit and a picture. Remember now, you're going to sit there and start thinking, what did Jesus look like? Immediately when you say that, there comes a picture in your mind. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's help you with that. Okay. It's your eyes of your imagination. Right. But Amen. here comes the difference. Yeah. When you are busy with Jesus Christ, communicating with Him, praying, everything. Yes. What does that mean? Where are you seated? In heavenly places with Him. In Him. Yes. So what is your imagination? Yes. Yes. Sanctified. It's in Him. Right. The devil won't give you other imagination. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, the first picture that you see there, who is it? Jesus. Jesus. And he's going to reveal it to you in the way according to your character and to your knowing and your understanding. Amen. Right. Amen. But if you're just walking in the city, <coughs> you're battling something, and you're not busy and encountering and interviewing Jesus, then the devil can give you other things. Right. Amen. If you sit there, let's say, in pride and arrogance, I'm going to see Jesus, I'm going to just... <laughs> You're not in it. No. You're busy. Then you're mad. But by you going to sit in Lord, aren't you? As there's a scripture that says, what if you ask for bread, he's not going to give you a stone no, and no. things like that. If you're busy with him and you want to see his face, he's not going to show you the devil. No, no, he's not. You see? 
And that's what you do. And that's what that's where the devil steals of most people because we try to believe what we see. If you are busy with Christ, you've got a sanctified imagination. And that's where your spiritual eyes open up. And then as you step further and further as the time goes, then later on you're at a place where you know that you know that you know. I walk with him, in him, I see him clearly. There's no doubt, am I seeing the right of it? You yeah. know that you know, you can't doubt it. Yeah. Yeah. So you can think on, if you've seen him, I saw him on his throne one time, yes. his vision. So I can think on about him and talk to him and yes. think about him on his throne. Yes, that's a good thing. Let me yeah. that's, a, that's a key that she actually yeah. released. Yeah. Always go back to your first place of encounter. Why? It's an altar. It's an open heaven. It's a portal. That's why if you take Israel, if you take Abram, Jacob, Isaac, all of them built altars, Moses, and they always went back to the altar, the place of encounter where God speaks. Yeah. You always go there. Remember, you are building in your own life a lot of elders. Every encounter is a stone built on an altar. So that's your place. And then later on, you will come. You go to that place. That is your secret place. You come and he takes you from there. Yes. Wherever. Yes. Wherever you go. Everybody has got the special place. Yep. Always goes back. Start there. And from there on, he takes you. All over. <laughs> Yes. So, how can you? Uh, is there a key or a, about a vain imagination? Where there's a difference, oh, obviously. Yeah. 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 You can have if when you're not in intimacy with God, yeah. your imagination is gone and it's the fault. Because it's yeah, carnal. Yeah. yeah. Carnal. 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 That's why the key is to be intimate, to be in control. That's why love, 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 love seeking. Amen. Otherwise, because there's a lot of move in the body of Christ at the moment <laughs> of having encounters and things. Yes, there is. And can I tell you? Vain imaginations. Amen. Lots of it. Yes. Amen. Because everybody now tries to be so spiritual mm -hmm. and so extravagant because they think that shows their maturity and their goodness. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell them that. Yeah. And, the, and there are crazy things out there and weird things. Believe me, you'll see crazy and weird things anyway mm. when you move in the Spirit. Amen. But if God is not your center point, if He's yeah. not your everything, there's something wrong. Yeah. If you move in the Spirit in dimensions and places and you can't tell me that Jesus, the Holy Spirit, or the Father is present or somewhere, with whom are you there? Yeah. Right. Some familiar right. Spirit. Mm. And you're there on your own Mandate and authority is not about Jesus, it's about yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I know these, these hubs and groups that form around the world, and some of, many of them come to see me and speak to me. And they sit in together because they're going to ascend. <laughs> and every day they get to their ascend into the stars. Believe me, even a monkey can ascend into the stars. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing wrong. You can go in all dimensions because you've been created as a ruler of all. Yeah. Amen. So there's nothing to move in the spirit. Yeah. But where do you ascend to because you're in Christ? Amen. And everything's in Him. So where do you ascend to? Yeah. That's what I ask of none to give me the answer. Yeah. You're in Christ, in heavenly places. In all of creation is in Christ. So where do you ascend to? Amen. So they're trying to be so supernatural. Yeah. Trying to impress and they actually just fail. It's yes. all about himself. It's definitely not about Jesus. <sighs> You see, everything that you do, you must always ask yourself, and everything that you ask of the Lord, why and how do I glorify God? Yeah. Yeah. If it's nothing to do with glorifying God, why do you ask Him? Right. Why do you want it? Right. <laughs> you know how you explain that you ask the Lord to show you scriptures? <clears throat> Like when they were in battles and stuff, and you wa and yeah. you watched it, yeah. the Lord showed it to you. <clears throat> we could maybe 
Couldn't we kind of do the same thing? Exactly the same as seeing his face. In the scriptures, yeah. Yeah. we could maybe ask him to Absolutely. show himself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you go there the, and you sit and made it tight. It's been kind. It's Psalm. Like when he's ministering to people, we can ask him to reveal to us what he's doing or something. Oh, yeah. Besides what's just written there, you know, I mean. Yeah, all the time. Right. That's how you listen. When, when I speak here, yeah, you should you should have got so many other revelations on top. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Does All he, the time. Does he ever <coughs> explain to you what he's feeling while he's ministering to those people? Oh, yeah. Sure. It's the sure. possession of Christ. Because you need to release it. Yeah. yeah. You need to re release his purpose as well. Feeling, yeah. Psalm 62 wow. says, I stand silent listening to listen for the one I love, waiting as long as it takes for the Lord to rescue me. For God alone, alone spirit. Silently, in the other scriptures, Psalm 27, Psalm, I think, 33 or 34 as well, it says that wait silently and be expected. Mm. So what, that, what are you doing? Meditating is waiting silently, be expected for him to reveal, to show, to tell. We work on our own timing because we start and we go and sit for 15 seconds and we have not heard or seen a thing, and then we start talking. Amen. We hand out our shopping list. <laughs> <laughs> and we fight and we yeah. start praising him, how yeah. amazing it is because yeah. we want something. <laughs> Instead of exercising to be silent. Right. Good. I'm just going to do a corporate prayer. Tomorrow night we'll lay hands on those who want to. And go and meditate on what you've heard tonight. If you've got questions tomorrow, we're going to spend time on some weird things. <laughs> a good thing. Yeah, let's pray. Father, you're amazing. Holy Spirit, you're amazing. For sure, you're amazing. Thank you. Thank you that you are touching us. Thank you that you are changing us. Thank you that you are releasing us desire yes. for you. Yes, and you're activating our DNA and our yes. scrolls and enlightening yes. it. And you're bringing ourselves, our body, soul, and spirit back into the place yes, of being a born amazing of you. Yes, back into a place where we desire and crave you to be one of you. Our desire is to reveal the truth of Jesus Christ. Yes, to rule as it is in heaven see your face, to reflect you, and to walk in the fullness of the God at three in one that's inside of us. And we say thank you, that's been given to us. Yes, Lord. I said you seal it all with the blood of Jesus yes. Christ. 